Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our 5-minute review playlist. We're talking about nephrology today. In previous videos, we talked about minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, diabetic nephropathy, amyloid nephropathy, diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, and just the last video was about acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Today, we'll talk about an evil disease, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, from few drops of blood in your urine to full-blown kidney failure in a matter of days. Whoops! Rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis has another name, crescentric glomerulonephritis. Look at this crescent right here. Please watch these videos in order for maximal retention. No pun intended. These are the kidney pathology videos that were discussed before. A normal kidney does not let protein in the urine, does not let blood cells in the urine. A kidney with nephrotic syndrome will let protein in the urine. A kidney with nephritic syndrome will let red blood cells in the urine. Rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis is overwhelmingly nephritic syndrome. Your kidney is literally shedding tears of blood in the urine. We have talked about nephrotic syndrome before, just to review. You have hyperproteinuria, hypoproteinemia, you get edema. The edema caused by kidney disease is generalized with periorbital swelling. The edema caused by heart and liver failure is generalized but does not involve periorbital swelling. Nephritic is from itis. To itis is to inflame. When your glomeruli are inflamed, they bleed. Nephrotic syndrome had four features, as you know. Nephritic syndrome has seven features. The most important two are hematuria, hypertension. What are the four features of nephrotic syndrome? High protein in my, urea. Low protein in my, emia. Edema and hyperlipidemia. How about nephritic syndrome? You have seven features. Hypertension, hematuria. Jugular venous distension, oliguria. Mild edema and proteinuria. Elevated bio creatinine, which is azotemia. Nephritic syndrome, my glomeruli are inflamed, there is blood in the urine, and I mean real blood, like with real red blood cell casts, dysmorphic red blood cells, not a pigment, not hemoglobin, not myoglobin, the real deal, the red blood cells. Your glomeruli are proliferating, hypercellular, and inflamed. If you lose lots of blood, you can get anemia. Proteinuria is present, but is not as severe as nephrotic syndrome. Renal azotemia is common. Hey, what are the four vital signs? Temperature, heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure. What is the fifth vital sign? Urine volume, especially in an ICU patient. Just because your urine look red doesn't necessarily mean that these are red blood cells. This could simply be a pigment. It could be myoglobin or hemoglobin or it could be the actual red blood cells. How can I tell? Look under the microscope and see the red blood cells. Microscopy is key. The urine dipstick is a doofus because it cannot differentiate between hemoglobin, myoglobin, or the actual red blood cells. Vitamin C interferes with the test results. Okay, medicosis, the urine was red. And I looked under the microscope, I saw the red blood cells, lots of them. So I know this is true, hematuria. Okay, who should I blame then? Should I blame the urethra, the bladder, the ureters, or the kidney? Well, if you see dysmorphic red blood cells and red blood cell casts, you can blame the kidney. Should I blame the kidney tubules or the kidney glomeruli? Order the beta-2 microglobulin to tell the difference. Also, dysmorphic red blood cells tend to be more glomerular, but red blood cell casts tend to be more with the tubular. I have a separate video about beta-2 microglobulins in my lab's playlist. Glomerulonephritis is inflammation of the glomeruli, usually caused by immune complex deposition. Don't forget the seven features. Do you remember the subtypes of nephrotic syndrome? Yeah, minimal change disease, focal segmental, membranous, diabetic, amyloid. Do you remember the nephritic nephrotic, diffuse proliferative, and membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis? Now we're talking nephritic. In the last video, we talked about acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Today, we're talking about rapidly progressive or 
microcentric glomerulonephritis. What can cause it, medicosis? Lots of stuff, including the diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, including acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, especially if the patient is older. If the patient is young, the prognosis is usually good. But if the patient is old, the prognosis is not as good. IgA nephropathy can lead to rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. And we have other diseases such as anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody, also known as good pasture syndrome. Some vasculitides can lead to rapidly progressive. Vasculitides is the plural of vasculitis, inflammation of vessels, such as granulomatosis with polyangiitis, microscopic polyangiitis, and eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Glomerulomains, glomeruli are affected. Nephromains, tubules are affected. Itis is inflammation. Rapidly progressive is mostly in the glomeruli. Why do you call it crescentric? Because they have hyperproliferation of the epithelium. Okay, visceral or parietal? Parietal. And it makes the shape of a crescent. In many patients, but not in all patients. Do you remember post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis that could happen after pharyngitis or a skin infection? Yeah, in some cases, this post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis can end up becoming rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis and you will end up on dialysis. This is your kidney, afferent arterial, efferent arterial, glomerular capillary tuft. This is the endothelium, this is the epithelium. We have visceral epithelium, aka podocytes, and we have parietal epithelium right here. Between the endo and the epithelium, there is the glomerular basement membrane. This is affected in good pasture syndrome, by the way. That's why it's called anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody disease. No duh. What do I see in rapidly progressive? You will see proliferation of the parietal epithelium of the glomerulus, and it looks like a crescent. That's why it's called crescentric glomerulonephritis. Why is this a bad thing? Because this will compress the glomerular capillary tuft. No GFR, no kidney. In some diseases that cause rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, you might find immune complex deposition under the podocyte. We call this subepithelial such as post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Or it could be subendothelial immune complex deposition, such as diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, which you see with lupus. Or we could have problems in type 4 collagen. As you know, type 4 is in the floor. What do you mean? It's in the basement membrane. Oh, do you mean my glomerular basement membrane? Sure. And when this is destroyed, you can get glomerulonephritis. I'll show you the slides of the kidney disease that we discussed before. With each one, I want you to pause and review. Here is one, here is two, here is three, here is four, here is five, here is number six, which is very important because diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis can cause what? Rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, if you remember. And it's associated with lupus. You see subendothelial immune complex deposition and wire looping of the capillaries. What's the pattern of the immune complex deposition? Granular, unlike good pasture, which is linear inside the membrane. Here is membranoproliferative, another nephritic nephrotic disease. Here is post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Can it cause rapidly progressive? Yes, in some rare cases. And if this happens, you will see what? I'll see subepithelial granular immune complex deposition, lumpy bumpy. Now let's talk about today's topic, the evil rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, aka crescentric glomerulonephritis, nephritic or nephrotic, nephritic for the most part, from hematuria to acute full-blown kidney failure in a matter of days or few weeks. Hypertension, hematuria, all of the features, and you can get kidney failure for sure. Under the microscope, you see proliferation of the parietal epithelium, and that's the crescent. Then you classify them based on what? Based on immunofluorescence, based on whether or not you have immune complex deposition. If I have immune complex position, they could be linear, such as good pasture. They could be granular, granular under the endothelium, diffuse proliferative, granular under the epithelium, 
post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. This is lupus. This is a kid with pharyngitis or skin disease. Then one to two weeks later, he develops blood in the urine and periorbital puffiness or swelling. Or you could have no immune complex deposition. We call this posse immune. Posse means like lack, shortage, absence, few, something like that. And this is negative immunophorism. How do I diagnose them then? You order another test and that's the ANCA. C. ANCA happens with granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly known as Wegener. Or positive for P. ANCA, such as microscopic polyangiitis or Churg-Strauss syndrome. Hey, mitosis, what the flip is ANCA? I've talked about it in my rheumatology playlist in separate videos. It's a huge topic. The only disease in medicine that I know of that is C. ANCA positive is Wagner or granulomatosis with polyangiitis. And if you remember my video about granulomatosis with polyangiitis, I told you, instead of writing Wegener, replace the G with a C and say it as Wegner. And remember the C anca and all of the symptoms of granulomatosis with polyangiitis start with a C or at least they have a C in it, such as crescentic glomerulonephritis. Please refer to my pulmonology playlist to watch my video called granulomatosis with polyangiitis mnemonic. This is the only disease that I know of that is C ANCA positive. Any other ANCA is gonna be P ANCA, okay? Just to make it easy for you. In the next video, we'll talk about good pasture syndrome. How do I treat rapidly progressive? Well, the prognosis is very poor. You try your best. Dialysis in case of kidney failure, of course. And you try to treat the underlying cause if you can. Usually the patient will require immunosuppressants. And in case of good pasture, you can try plasma exchange to get rid of these autoantibodies. Because the patient has autoantibodies against the glomeruli and autoantibodies against the alveoli. That's why the patient is having blood in the urine and blood in the cough. These are the stages of chronic kidney disease. The lower the GFR, the worse. Now pause and review. If you like this video, you will enjoy my renal physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. You can download it today. I also have an antibiotics course, an acid-based disturbances course, a cardiac pharmacology course, and many others. And you can watch the first 60 minutes of my course on pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics for free on my website. For a limited time, you can use discount code PANCREAS to get 30% discount towards any course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. It's medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.